Well, hi there. I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and Bible journaler. And today we're going to work on Psalm 106. Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel from everlasting to everlasting. Let all the people say amen. And I'm using this one today because the word in World Watercolor Month for the day is enduring. And I thought everlasting to everlasting, a big, beautiful tree would be great. And so I'm going to put a big, beautiful tree here in my psalm. Starting off with my Daniel Smith watercolor paints to make the tree trunk. And I didn't draw the tree first. Notice that. Because it's real easy to just put a tree trunk in there. You can keep adjusting it and make it wider if you want a, a big, hunky, wide type of tree trunk. And then I did some scribbly lines down at the bottom. And I'm going to mush it in with the grass. And that's going to mean I don't have to worry about whether or not my roots look like roots because I'm going to let the color mix together with the green that's down there. And I'm going to even take my green paint and put a few flicky type of marks in there so that I have a few strands of grass sticking up, make it a little bit more realistic. Go back a little bit to my brown paint so that I can make some branches coming off. And trees don't have even branches everywhere, so you want to have them look a little bit random. And I'm going to put just a few of them down here because I want this tree to be super full of color. And I want it to be huge and feel like it's a big enduring tree. So my tree is going to cascade off the edge of the paper. If you try to contain your tree within or whatever image you're drawing within the confines of that piece of paper, it's going to feel small. But as soon as it starts to spill out, it's so big even your page can't contain it. It's going to feel even bigger than it is. So I'm imagining where the rest of the tree will be so I have that nice kind of round-ish shape around the whole thing. And I'm adding paint. Some of it is thicker and then I'm using some water to water down some of it and I can get so I can get multiple types of greens in there out of just one paint and spread that color around a little bit. And I'm going to put some of these leaves down at the bottom and in between these branches so that it looks like they're behind the tree trunk. Because sometimes we, we tend to put the tree trunk and then the, the bottom of the tree starts at a particular point and it doesn't look like they merge together. But I want to create something where it feels like there's a really deep underside to my tree. Taking a baby wipe and lifting off some of that color so I get this really nice light green and my words on the page are still going to be readable. And then I'm using a secret that I learned from one of my watercolor teachers, which is whenever you're making landscapes and trees and things, use a little bit of an orange or a brown in there. Even if you don't end up seeing a lot of it later, just use a little bit of it because it gives it a little more natural of a feel to it. I lightened that color with a baby wipe and ironed it so I'd have a little flatter of a surface to work with. Ironing will not make it perfectly flat, but it's certainly going to help so that you can get more detail in there. I mixed a little thicker of a paint. It's the same color that I was using already. And I'm making almost little clumps of stippling, little, little blobs. Make them nice and uneven and then take a wet brush, not a totally soaking wet brush, but a, a good damp brush, and start to push that color around a little bit. You want to soften some edges and leave other edges hard because when you get that combination of both kinds of edges in watercolor, it starts to look much more realistic. As you'll see, some places where it blends all the way into the background and other places where the shadows are going to be really sharp and stand out. In a few areas, I'm going to use the darker paint to create a real shadow area, especially down here at the bottom. This is going to make it look like there's a real underside to the tree, like you just want to go sit under that tree with your Bible and just spend some time with the Lord under there. It would be a really nice, comfortable place. And the more I add a lot of that rich color way down at the bottom, it just starts to feel like that's in the backside of my tree trunk. If all of that was just toward the front though, notice it's not going to look like it's under the tree. It's just going to look like it's at the bottom of this giant shape. And then I'm going to add a few other areas of dark onto my, my tree or that kind of mid-tone type of green. If you sit and look at a tree, I have a beautiful big vine maple in my backyard. And if I look out at that tree, I can see there's clumps of dark, clumps of light, and they're not even. So if you make, the, make things too regular, it's not going to feel realistic. So I'm kind of just throwing some color in here, a little bit of yellow now to add some sparkle into some, some a few areas to make it a little brighter. It's a lemon yellow type of color. 
and you can go crazy with this kind of thing and add all kinds. You can make a rainbow tree if you really wanted, but I wanted to keep it a little more realistic. So I'm using a navy blue color to go really into my deepest, darkest areas. This one is called Indian Throne Blue, but you can use all different kinds of things. You could even use a dark purple kind of thing under there. And look how nice that shadow looks going all the way underneath of there. I've, I've got some real dimension going on and my tree branch now kind of pops forward. I can add a little bit of darkness to it, a little more rich color to it as well. But you can tell the difference between where the tree branch goes into that tree versus where it's, uh, where it's kind of standing out in front of it. And then I'll add a, a little bit of that same dark color since I had some mixed up to put a shadow under it. And now I want to put my words on there. My words weren't going to work on top of all that tree. So I wrote them on a piece of graph paper so I could get things kind of straight, which for me, I, I tend to not be real straight with my lettering. And I wanted a few leaves since I'm using a tree. I wanted a few leaves as part of my, my sentiment group here. And I'm tracing them onto a piece of vellum because the vellum is going to be a tip in. And that way I don't have to worry about where I'm going to put all the words on the page because I can put it right here on the tip in and glue it into my Bible. And I'm using just regular old water-based markers. You can use all different kinds of mediums on something like this. Well, I shouldn't say all kinds of mediums. You can't paint on it. It's not really good with water, but it'll work with markers like this. You can use Copic markers, lots of things on a piece of vellum that you're going to tip into your Bible. And to make my leaves look like they have some dimension, I'm using two greens. Did my dark green first, go over it with my light green, and then kind of scribble over top of them so I get a nice blend between them. And I'll do the same thing on this larger leaf down here at the bottom. And since it's larger, I have a little more room that I can play with. So I am, I'm adding a little bit of a sort of scalloped edge to my leaf. So I'll just make it a little more interesting since it is a giant, ginormous leaf. And on something like this, if you're drawing in pencil, you can erase it from the other side so you don't end up with a pencil line, but you still have the pencil line that you can trace. And this is going to be colored on the back because when I do my white lettering on the front of the leaves, if I did that right on top of this green marker, the green would seep through the white pen. And then my letters wouldn't be white, they would be light green. So coloring on the back is helpful because then I can add things to the front of the piece of paper. It's also going to look a little smoother blending on the front side once I get it done than it looks even from the back side because you're seeing it through the vellum paper. And I do have a link in the description to the vellum paper that I use. I use it instead of tracing paper as well because it's easier to see through when I'm doing things with it. So it is one that I keep a package or two around all the time. So now I can lay this right over top and trace my letters with the, uh, I'm just going to use the, the writing nib of the marker. You, you could, if you had big enough letters, you could use brush lettering on something like this. And I'm not really good with the brush nib when I'm doing my lettering. I'm going to be practicing that and learning how to do that better. But with small letters like this, it's really hard to use a big old brush nib. So I'm just going to be using the writing nib and let it be my handwriting and be okay with that. And then on the leaves, I can add my little words in white. And again, the white is going to stay nice and bright, but it has that nice rich color behind it, but it's not going to have all that seepage through that I would normally have if I did the pen right on top of that. So my block of lettering notice is off toward the right hand side of my, my uh, tip in so that it's going to not be right over top of the words, it's gonna be over top of the tree and it also won't fall into the, the gutter of the book. And on that gutter edge, I have a piece of double stick tape on there. You can use red line tape, you can use this be creative tape, there's some called score tape. And I line up the outside edge so it's right where I want it to be and hold up the sticky edge of that paper. Once I'm sure it's exactly where I want it, then I'll kind of just press it down. And that stuff's not going to let go. So get it where you want it so you don't have to remove it again. And you can see now, you can see right underneath of it and read all the scripture words as well as see your beautiful artwork and your beautiful text right on top. So there you go. 
that is this week's video. I hope you'll try something wonderful and beautiful in your Bible like this this week. Join me in the Facebook group. Link is in the doobly-doo for that as well as for all the supplies and everything. And I will see you again next week. Thank you so much. God bless you.